Hey guys, so here bringing you another patch note breakdown. Today we're doing patch 9.20, which I, I had to kind of clarify and just kind of work out. Uh, this, I believe, isn't for Worlds. Um, so World is on patch 9.19, and I believe the rest of Worlds is going to stay on that patch. Because um, it would be a bit weird, all the teams are prepping, you know, a month in ahead of time because they're giving patch notes early. You know, hell, I'm giving patch notes early uh, if I want them. Um, so they're going to stay on 9.19, and right here says, other than that, we're keeping the scope of this one pretty small as we move from focusing our work on worlds to finalizing changes and tuning for preseason. So this is where, you know, we said in the last patch note, they're kind of changing things for pro play. This is kind of where now they're going to slowly start to change things back for solo queue. And there are differences. So we've got uh, champions, items, adding friends from via social. I don't know what that means. Uh, new skins. You got some new high new ones. And just to make the announcement, uh, the, the league partner Chroma and bundle that we're getting, should be getting it in the next couple days, um, is Darius. So we're getting high noon Darius with his green Chroma. It looks pretty cool. Again, I don't really know why Darius is getting another skin because he's got a lot. But well, we, we know because Darius obviously sells quite well, like Ash sells quite well. Um, and yeah, that's the that's the general principle of why certain champions have a buttload of skins because they sell. The leagues are free to play game, so you know. Uh, Amberry Seven, welcome very much. Two months, hopefully. Let's keep it up. Keep it up with good work. Thank you very much. All right, so Blitzerkranku, obviously last patch he got his hook, and that potentially made him a little bit too strong. Um, so his armor is going down by four, and his armor growth is going down by 0 0.5. That is actually considerable nerfs. Wow. That's quite big. Again, Blitzcrank is pretty tanky, but obviously the hook is his main thing. And yeah, that, that's actually pretty considerable nerfs. That makes him considerably squishier in lane phase, in the early in the early lane phase. So yeah, more vulnerable to die. You know, if he's against a Leona, he misses his hook. Leona engages on him, and then the AD carry has free hit. That Blitzcrank probably will die, or he's, you know, going to take a buttload more damage. Uh, thanks for the fitty biddies, dude. Uh, we've got Garen. I'm not a massive fan of Garen, so I don't think we'll go over this too much. But passive regen is more reliable. W now grants a shield instead of extra damage reduction in the first 0.75 seconds. E now spins with attack speed. R now always deals true damage and villain passive removed. Oh, they're getting rid of the villain passive. Okay. So as for base stats, so they are giving him attack speed. They're giving him slightly more health, just rounding it. And they are nerfing his health growth just to kind of clean it up. Um, now, we spoke about this not too long ago because they have been going, oh, look, it looks so good. This, to me, doesn't look good at all, at least for high rating. Uh, maybe for low rating, Garen might be a, a bigger problem now. But <laughs> if I'm honest, Garen uh, is not a good champion. As, as Again, if you like him, that's fine. But he's very one dimensional. You know, he runs at you. You know, he has to press Q and just run. You know, running man, you know, that's it. He's got nothing else. And what this change to me is forcing is him to build more damage rather than tanky. Therefore, he's a only running champion that has to build more damage. And he he's really easy to beat now. Um, and you're making him squishier. So yeah, sure, maybe if he can get on top of people, he'll kill them. But especially in the higher ratings, Garen doesn't get on top of people. It's really hard for a Garen to do anything in higher rating um, because so many things counter him like everything basically so yeah i don't know again we're, we're not gonna go over all of this if you're a garen player i'm sure there's a garen content creator that's really hyped for it i'm not gonna fake hype um to me it's garen if they didn't you know you can change little bits here and there make something scale of attack speed cool but if you don't change his core fundamental kit that's 10 years old he isn't really gonna be different so yeah uh ivan now a range champion Huh? W no longer... Wait, what? Oh my god, are they making Ivan ranged permanently? Huh. Oh, that's kind of weird. That's really weird. So one of Ivan's things was when he was standing in a bush, he could attack from range. They now got, they've got rid of that, and he can attack from range permanently. That's really weird. I like why I okay. I guess it makes him more viable because obviously that means he doesn't always have to be in a bush to get attacks off. But Ivan's not also really known for his attacks, like his auto attacks. So I guess if you're an Ivan player, you might be happy. But this isn't going to affect the game pretty much at all. Okay, uh, Lissandra passive and W damage ratios increased. Is anybody surprised you see a Lissandra buff considering she was like the main champion that featured in the music video of Worlds? I'm not. 
Uh, the, you know, I will also say a good prediction on what the Victoria skin is, by the way, would potentially be Lysandra now, because damn, she featured in that video a lot. Uh, we're sharpening her niche as a bursty engaged mage while trying not to impact her pro laning power, uh, leaning power. Yeah, she is a good pro pick. So they are buffing her armor. They are putting a 0.2 damage ratio on her passive, which is the ghosty thing. And they're putting a 0.2 ratio on the W. Whoa, those are buffs. Hello. Wow, Lissandra actually might not be bad anymore. 0.2 plus ability power ratios on two different abilities. Damn, that, that's a lot of damage in mid to late game. Like extra that you weren't getting before. That's pretty decent. Again, not sure if that'll make her meta, but like if you're a Lissandra player, my God, you're happy right now. That's crazy. Uh, Pantheon? Wait, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Q base damage decreased later. Oh God, okay. Pantheon remains a top tier pick in most skilled games. We've decreased some of his early uh, game damage and it's more impactful with higher skill games. Also a bug fix. So yeah, so when Pantheon got released, people were like, what the hell does this champion do? People worked out the Q stab is basically broken. Even I'd admit that spell is basically broken. Um, so what Riot did was like, right, we're going to nerf his early game a bit. We're going to give him some late game because, again, he was notorious. He is the biggest falling off champion in the game of League of Legends history, practically. It's like, whoa, he's really strong. And then there's a sudden like, Pff! like he just falls off the cliff. Um, so they're doing that even more now. So yeah, so early game, it's staying. And then <laughs> from rank two, it's getting nerfed in damage. And then yeah, 20 damage nerf by rank five. So that's a, a mid to late game nerf for Pantheon when he already falls off a cliff. In term, again, in terms of damage, for those that are like, why is he pro play? Like in Worlds, he's got 100% pick or ban. Uh, mainly his E. His E is actually his best ability. Uh, the, the, the amount that that champion can do with good coordination, you ult at the right time with good coordination and you E and you block something really important. That's huge. Um, combining with mainly his CC, it's not bad. Um, you don't pick Pantheon really in pro play at least for like bullying the early game because then you just pick something, you know, the enemy team will just pick something late game and then the Pantheon's kind of screwed because most pro games go to late game. But yeah, he is good uh, when you know what you're doing. Kiana, very strong at the moment. Most games I'm seeing bans on this champion. Um, so we're hitting Kiana's trade damage, especially after she hits level three, since it is deceptively high and is making a po uh, making her oppressive uh, in the early game. 100%. You saw, if you watched the Kale episode that we did, the Korean Kale, the Korean was bullying the Ke uh, Kiana in mid lane and then the Kiana hit level three and then see, suddenly, boom, the Kiana's got all the confidence in the world. And it's because that was just known at level three, you can't really out-trade a Kiana. So the damage has been quite heavily nerfed. So 20 damage nerf but at rank one. Um, uh, then a 15 damage nerf at rank two. 10 damage nerf at rank three. 5 damage nerf at rank four. And then it's equalized at rank five. So yeah, that is an early game nerf, which I do think is very much needed. Shaco, again, not really a champion I'm very much interested in. W boxes are now AoE. Wow, that's actually, wow, that sounds really good. Uh, more early game damage and less late game damage. I think that makes sense. To me, Shaco has always been the early game champion that sucks in late game. But in the last maybe year, year and a half, people have been playing him more like a hyper, hyper carry late game, uh, but really like a split push hyper carry. Uh, fundamentally, Shaco isn't great in high rating if you're coordinated in your team fight. That you know, like your grouping is five, and you know a Shaco's coming eventually. He's pretty easy to count. It's same like with Rengar and Zed and stuff like that. If you're coordinate, coordinated as five people, assassins are always going to struggle. That's just the design of assassins. I actually preferred when people were playing Shaco for early game. Like you completely took over the game early. Like you ganked at level two, you got a kill. You invaded the enemy jungle with ignite, you killed that person. To me, that is what Shaco is all about, and that that playstyle has definitely fallen off. So if they are leaning him way more towards early game Shaco, that's actually I, I'm I'm actually pretty happy with that. And I, I don't know what the general consensus with Shaco players is, um, but yeah, that that to me is always what Shaco has been. So his attack damage is being nerfed. What? Okay. So it's been nerfed and is... What? Okay. So his base attack damage has been nerfed. His attack damage growth has been nerfed. So that is 
two nerfs. But then his passive, basic attacks... Uh, okay, so this might be why. Basic attacking an enemy now deals an additional damage, depending what level, plus 0.15 bonus attack damage uh, from behind. Uh, and this also can critically strike. So that's why he's getting these nerfs, is because he's now got this. That, that makes up for it completely. Two, Shiv Poison now deals an additional damage from behind. So his new, like, basically a new backstab, you have to be really from behind to do a lot of stuff with Shaco. Which, again, makes sense. He's always wanted to do that. But now, if you get an auto attack off when you're behind somebody, and you get your E off, the two, Shiv, whatever, that's a lot of bonus damage that you weren't really getting before, or not all of it. So that that's pretty big. Uh, stealth Duration has gone, wow, up a second at rank 1, and uh, nerfed in late game. So again, some people who are these Shaco players that have been used to this late game playstyle, they might not like it. They have got a second buff in the early game and a second nerf in the late game. It's shifting all of his power off. You have to do stuff in the early game. That's where your stealth is the strongest, kind of. So yeah, that's kind of big. Cooldown has also gone down. Uh, the damage uh, when striking from behind. So again, another uh, uh, from behind ability is doing more damage, and, but no ability power ratio. So what are they giving? Are they getting rid of AP Shaco? Kind of seems like it because, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, more damage from behind with AD. And that also is a guaranteed to critically strike from 130% damage. So it's a guaranteed crit as well. The new W, uh, when triggered, the boxes can now attack multiple enemies in AoE. That's pretty good. New AoE damage. So that that does have uh, ability power, but it's a pathetic ratio. 0 0.1. That's, you know, that's nothing. Um, but it now does AoE. So if you, you know, the whole enemy team runs into five boxes, yeah, maybe it'll do some damage. Um, Non-champion fear duration. Two seconds to all non-champions. Fear movement speed has been nerfed. So it used to be 100, really big slow. It's now only 60. Uh, well, actually, 60 to minions and monsters and 100 to champions. So it stays the same for champions. Okay, that's actually a buff. Because for jungle, you didn't want all the minions to run away from the box with quick fear. So they actually will stay in more of your damage range. Oh, here we go. So maybe AP Shaco isn't dead. So the damage type for your E now has gone from physical to magic. Oh, okay. So it's not completely dead. Um... Ooh, that actually will do a lot of damage. So it's doing more base damage, the E. It's now got a, a 0 0.8 bonus attack damage ratio where it used to scale. It used, okay, that is actually a nerf to mid-late game because it used to be it used to get to 1.2. It's now 0 0.8, so that's a nerf. But it now has also a nerf, 0 0.6 ability power ratio instead of 0 0.75, so that's another nerf. Um, execute damage used to be 0 to 50% increased damage based on missing health. It's now 50% increased damage on targets below 30%. So it's an execute. I don't know if that's a buff or a nerf. Because, yeah, like, it does... It's magic damage based. And what that means is if someone is building armor, it means your two shift poison, your E that you throw, you know, that, that needs magic resist to resistance against. It's dealing magic damage now, not physical damage. So I guess that's something. And yeah, maybe what Sir Dart said, with the passive combining that, because like this, so if you're doing the, the two shift from behind somebody, I guess then it probably will be a buff in late game at least. But again, a bit weird. It's not, it's not an obvious buff at least. And then the R... Box trigger time, uh, boxes trigger after two seconds, boxes trigger immediately. Damage has gone down. Yep, damage has been nerfed. Ability power ratio is down by 0.3 and the damage has been nerfed. But now obviously he's doing uh, ability power, uh, sorry, AoE damage with all the boxes, the three boxes that spawn with his ultimate. And the fear duration has gone, it's equalized. So it used to be one second at rank when, when he's level 11, it's now always uh, one second. So it's a, it's a buff to uh, early game and nerf to late game. So this is weird. Um, I'm not sure about this. It's not obvious. Uh, it's going to be a different playstyle that a lot of Shakos have, have you know, used to. Um, and yeah, I, I reckon there's going to be some happy Shakos and I reckon there's going to be some pretty unhappy Shakos. I doubt there's many in between. But uh, if he's more early game, I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. Um, apparently, yeah, well, P Pink Ward, the guy, I think that mains top lane AP Shaco, who, you know, somehow gets higher, highish rating. I don't know if this is good for him at all. 
because you know i think he plays shaco for like late game annoyance and stuff like that um and this is a nerf to his late game a big nerf to late game shaco so yeah rip the shakos that play for late game i guess uh sona quality of life change for the baby girl who wrote this what did a rioter legit write quality of life change for the baby girl that seems a bit weird okay so it's easier to know when empowered basic attack is coming legit a rioter wrote I'm not obviously going to get into anything political and I'm not white knighting, but, you know, with it being 2019 and the quality in that, I'm surprised that, you know, they can write in patch notes, baby girl in reference to Sona. Like, I, I don't know, that just seems a little bit cringy to me, but whatever. Uh, but you can track her passive a bit easier now, so that's something. Uh, Varus, uh, he hasn't seen much play, so I would presume these are buffs. Uh, 2 AD buff at rank 1 base. A mana regen has gone up to 8. Uh, mana uh, has gone down, but they just... Again, Riot, I think, are in the, in, the, in, the, in the camp that they just want to make these complete numbers, by the way. So it used to be 360.5. It's now 360. It's been a pattern that's Riot's been doing for a while now, and the health has gone up by 1, everybody. It used to be 499. It's now 500. So not crazy buffs, but it'll help him a little bit. Victor. Q no longer scales with Victor's mana. W augment now slows uh, to other spells. Oh, wait, no. W augment now grants slows to other spells. Oh, that's huge. Okay, that could be really good. That means you don't need Riley early. Ooh. And R now ticks faster and moves quicker. That was needed. So Q, it used to scale off mana. It no longer doesn't. It now scales... It just They just got rid of that damage. So it does base damage now where it didn't used to, and it's the same ability power ratio. Honestly, that could be a buff, because Victor didn't really ever buy mana. Not really. W, uh, the shield. Oh, it's the shield. Okay, yeah, so it's the shield ratio. Eh, still, I think that's a buff. That'll be a bigger shield, because again, I don't think many Victors bought mana. Uh, King Tututmoon. Welcome, dude. Um, but yeah, so I, I, think that's a, I think that's a buff to his shield. If Well, maybe not early, but I think it would be maybe mid-game it would equalize into a buff. W, so it used to, enemies stunned by gravity shield are dragged into the center. Direct hit slow enemies by 20% for one second. Wait, so what, they don't jump into the center anymore? Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, Victor's personal item gives a lot of mana. Yeah, but he also is known to get a stupid amount of ability power with that as well. Um, Victor actually can get some of the most ability power for any mid laner. Uh, Chaos Storm will continue chasing champions even after Victor dies. Okay, so that's becoming kind of like Tibbers. I, I, that's cool. Chaos Storm can now move over terrain. Ooh, that's a big buff. Because like when it's just like creeping around a wall really slowly, that's kind of annoying. It can go just straight over walls and stuff. I think that's pretty cool. It now ticks every one second. It does six ticks now instead of three. Whoa. But it does less damage, obviously, per tick. Um... It's basically just cut in half because there's more ticks. And the augment perfect storm movement speed is 25% faster now instead of 20. Okay, I think this is actually pretty good Victor buffs, you know. I don't know if it's going to make him into play a lot. Because he's kind of a niche champion with a, an interesting play style. Again, it's one of those buffs, I hate to say it. Uh, Mini Majua. I uh, love the content. Keep it up. Thank you. Um, it's kind of one of those buffs that we are seeing a trend recently that it doesn't seem it's going to be like game breaking. It's not going to make him meta really. But if you play Victor, ooh, you're happy. Like you should be. So it, yeah, that, that is becoming more of a trend that those type of buffs are happening. But there we go. That's all the champions. One item change. Locket of the Iron Solari is now... It used to be shield strength used to be 30 plus 15 every level. Admiral Cotton Candy, welcome dude, eight months in a row. It's now 120 plus 10 per level. Oh, when does that equalize out? So it's obviously a buff as soon as you get it. Um, so let's say you get lock it at what, level nine? So you'd be doing a 210 shield straight away when you buy lock it at, at level nine. What would you have you had it before? Um, let's see, I don't want to make any mistakes while I'm recording, so... 15 times 9 plus 30. 
So it's a hundred. So if you got a locket of the Iron Solari at level nine, which I think is roughly maybe when you could get it, you before would have a hundred and sixty-five shield. Now you'd be getting a two hundred and ten shield. The question is: this is this is this a late game? So a hundred and eighty plus hundred and twenty. So the maximum shield you can get for lock it at level 18 is 300 it now again i think it actually might be the same what it used to be 270 yeah so at, at level 18 it's exactly the same but what that also means is lock it the iron solari has been buffed basically until level 18 so it's better than its old shield until it's level 18 and then it's just the same that's pretty good i think that's actually not bad at all so yeah Adding friends via social. As of 9.20, players will no longer be able to find and add friends via social media. I didn't e Honestly, I didn't even know you could do that. When clicking on add friends icon, there will no longer be an option to click by social network and connect for... I had no idea you could even do that, by the way. So... Woo. <laughs> Great. Um, I don't know, you know, whatever. There's a bu bunch of bug fixes, and then, yeah, the new skins, High Noon Ash, High Noon Darius, and Hecarim. And again, reminding everybody, that is the Chroma bundle that we'll be giving away. And hell, let's do it, because um, obviously these aren't the most popular videos. To thank you guys for watching this video specifically, uh, make sure you subscribe, like the video, comment down below what do you think of this patch. Um, do you like it? Do you not like it? Is something missing? Do you disagree with something? Agree with something? Uh, leave your region, Europe, or North America, and that will enter you to win a High Noon Darius bundle. I probably won't get the bundles for a few days, so I'll say probably give me about a week to contact you if you're the winner. But yeah, leave your summoner name and all that good stuff and I'll contact you if you do end up winning. Again, the way that I do it is always the same way, is I there's websites out there that you go on, you put the video URL in, pick a comment from random as long as the comment you know does what i said you know they're subscribed they've, they've done all that the, the comment makes sense then um then you win and i always and people have asked this before i don't announce who wins i heard uh of nightmare things of giveaways in the past going these are like on twitter these people won and then those people got their like twitters hacked and stuff it's like i'd rather just keep it in like kind of like they no one needs to know that the only person that needs to know is the people that win right it doesn't really matter um but yeah that's gonna be it if you guys did enjoy the video throw a like on the video throw a subscribe make sure you enter if you want to win the high noon darius and i'll see you guys next time see ya